Hi, everyone. I am putting the links for the slides, the Q&A doc, and the survey into Zoom chat. I don't think anyone who came in recently can see that. So now I think we've, we've let in quite a few people into the room now. Um, I want to welcome you to the HPC Best Practices webinar series, which is brought to you by the Ideas Productivity Project funded by the Exascale Computing Project. This series is a collaboration involving the U.S. Department of Energy computing facilities um, at Argonne, Oak Ridge, and Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. I'm Haya Nam of Los Alamos National Lab. David Rogers is my co-host from Oak Ridge National Lab. And we are really excited to be hosts for today's webinar, Testing and Code Review Practices in Research Software Development. The webinar is going to be presented by Nasser Eisti uh, from California Polytechnic State University. So Dr. Eisti is an uh, assistant professor in the Computer Science and Software Engineering Department of Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. He received his, his PhD in uh, computer science from the University of Alabama in spring 2020. His research interests lie in the area of empirical software engineering, software quality, and research software engineering. Dr. Eisti has prior experience working at Los Alamos National Lab and the National Center for Computing Applications for Supercomputing Applications and CSA. He's a recipient of the BSSW uh, 2020 Fellowship Award from the Department of Energy. So uh, I'm I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that he can start sharing his. Um, while we're doing that, I just want to remind everyone that we have uh, over 200 tickets for this webinar, so all attendees have been muted upon entry. Uh, if you have a question, please enter it into Zoom chat or also the Google Doc um, linked uh, in Google uh, in the Zoom chat. So I'll link it one more time for the new folks. Um, and uh, uh, Dr. Icy will take breaks periodically so that we can respond to any questions that come in. So with that, Nasser, do you want to go ahead and share your screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you are. Wonderful. So with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and hand it over to you. Sure. Thank you. So welcome everyone uh, to this webinar on the current practices of a couple of software quality activities, testing and uh, code review in research software development. Minute, please. Yep. Yeah, and so here already introduced me and thanks for doing so. Yeah, I'm a brand new assistant professor joining this fall at the California Polytechnic State University in the computer science and software engineering department. And I graduated my PhD uh, from computer science department in the University of Alabama. And yeah, I'm one of the BSSW 2020 fellow and I have prior experience working at NCSA and Los Alamos National Laboratory. So my research focuses on empirical software engineering and uh, software quality assurance, especially in research software. So what is research software? Research software is a special kind of software developed by researchers from a wide variety of domain, including but not limited to science, engineering, business, and humanities. Researchers develop software to make predictions or better understand real world processes. This is the kind of software uh, that solves computationally complex or data intensive problems. It can range from large physical phenomena around on high performance computing machines, such as simulation software for nuclear industry, medicine and the military, and to smaller simulations and developed and used by groups of researchers on a desktop machine or a small cluster. Sometimes uh, this category of software provides infrastructure support, that is messaging middleware, scheduling software, or libraries for mathematical and scientific programming. 
research software also used in computing evidence for research publications. And we call research software developer to any researchers who develop software. They can range from uh, researchers who do not pose any software engineering knowledge to experienced professional software developers with considerable software engineering knowledge. And researchers join sites and make critical decisions based upon the results obtained from research software. So therefore, the correctness of the design and implementation of this software is of utmost importance. If the software is of low quality, the results are less trustworthy and then prone to failure in mission critical situations. So low quality software may lead to incorrect research conclusions as well. But it is very difficult to make the research software error free because of the complexity of the underlying science, relatively unknown results from scientific algorithms, and the constantly growing esteem of data. And we have also observed that researchers often place less importance on traditional views of software quality than on other scientific goals. So regarding this impact, my research focuses on developing techniques and tools to assist developers in efficiently building high quality software. So today I'm going to present the results from two community surveys. So I'm going to show you a tons of charts. Uh, so be ready for that. And in the first part of this survey, I'll talk about software testing. And in the second part, I will discuss code review practices in research software development. And then at the end, I will provide recommendations for best practices of software testing and code review in research software. So jumping into the first part. So we conducted an online survey. So at first we piloted the survey directly with some experienced research software developers and adjusted the wording according to their suggestions to make it uh, clearly understandable to the respondents. And then we made sure that we provided enough definitions so that the software engineering terms used in the survey do not create any confusion to the respondents. We also have the IRB application approved from the University of Alabama, and then we send the survey out to mailing lists of research software developers. We circulated the survey to RAC research software engineering Slack channels across different countries around the world. And then some of our collaborators spread the survey through different uh, Department of Energy National Laboratories in the USA. And in addition, we published the survey in the monthly newsletter of Better Scientific Software, BSSW, and Ideas Productivity mailing list. And we have used a tool uh, called Qualtrics to develop the online survey. And we kept the survey open for about a month. And at the end of the survey, I was able to gather 120 complete responses to include in this study. And for the data analysis, I used the tool SPSS, uh, programming language R, to analyze the quantitative data. And for any data that are qualitative, so both me and my PhD advisor individually coded the data using a tool called NVivo. Then we find out the discrepancies, sat together, discussed, and decided the final results. So in this uh, first part of this talk, I'm going to discuss the demographics of the participants and then what level of knowledge do research software developers have on testing, then how do research software developers test their software, and why is testing research software difficult, and is it possible to adapt existing testing techniques uh, to test research software, and what improvements to the testing process do research software developers need. So at first, demographics. So developers' project role could affect their perception of testing. So identifying and distribu the distribution of respondents' role also helps us judge whether the survey reached a broad and diverse set of research software developers. This figure shows uh, the respondents were skewed more toward technical roles, that is developer and architecture, and then towards non-technical roles. Something to notice here, uh, because respondents could choose more than one role, the total in the figure is larger than the total of the responses. And next, the respondents experience provide insight into whether uh, she or he has enough knowledge to provide helpful responses to the survey. 
So this figure indicates uh, that most participants had more than a year of experience working in research software. And just under one third had more than five years experience and only a small number had less than one year. So this distribution suggests that the participants had appropriate knowledge and experience to provide uh, valid uh, answers to the question. Uh, so project stage helps determine which types of testing may be most useful. The projects represented by the respondents were overwhelmingly in the released state. This result is important because projects at this stage should have already established testing programs that they deem useful. And number of developers. So because teams of different sizes may have different perspective on the use of software engineering practices, we asked the respondents about their project size. And we can see in this figure that most of the respondents worked uh, on smaller teams in terms of number of developers. So what level of knowledge do research software developers have on testing? We asked the respondents uh, in a survey question that how confident are you on your knowledge of software testing? So most of the respondents mentioned at least average level of confidence of knowledge of testing. And more than one third respondents think that their confidence level is in the range of high or very high. Uh, while we asked their understanding of the testing concept used in their project, uh, more than half of the respondents mentioned high or very high understanding. And only a few participants mentioned low or very low. And in terms of the understanding of the testing concepts needed in their project, the respondents are over, the responses are overwhelmingly in the range of average and high. Now the question is how do research software developers perform testing? We asked the respondents about their testing goals and these goals are standard testing goals and we in inherited these from the software testing books of Paul Amon. So maximum number of the participant mentioned level four. So which means testing is a mental discipline that helps all researchers develop higher quality software. And the second highest number of participants indicated level one, uh, which means the purpose of testing is to show correctness. The next highest level is uh, level three, which means the purpose of testing is not to provide anything, but reduce the risk of using the software. Just so you'd know, level zero means there is no difference between testing and debugging, and level two means the purpose of testing is to show that the software does not work. Then we asked the respondents about their usage of testing methods. So system testing is the most popular one in research software development. And a lot of the respondents mentioned unit and integration testing as well. So in terms of usefulness of testing, almost all of the respondents mentioned testing was useful always or most of the time. Only a few participants mentioned sometimes and rarely, and no one mentioned never. That was another option. So why is testing uh, research software difficult? So we asked the respondents that how complex is their testing process? So we can see in this figure that half of the respondents indicated at least moderately complex to test their project. And one third of the participant mentioned slightly complex. Um, then we asked them to explain any challenges or barriers they face to test their project. The most common answer to this question was test case design. So because uh, application cases are usually too big or expensive to test, so breaking them down to meaningful system tests is a, is a challenge then. And the second most common answer was lack of resources, which means lack of money, lack of people, or lack of time. The next thing um, is external dependencies which means uh, research software often depend on external hardware, software, compiler, et cetera, that makes testing difficult. And because research software developers are not trained software engineer, so there is always a lack of knowledge. And 
Many respondents found their testing process is very slow, uh, but they always have some sort of deadline to finish the task. So there is a cultural difference between the researchers and the software engineering community. And one unique challenge research software developers poses regarding testing is comparing with the reality. That means testing ocean model or climate control or nuclear weapons or something like this. And because of the lack of proper knowledge and resources, they are usually have a poor code base, which is hard to test. And many of their code is legacy code. Also, there are a few other challenges as well. So in this case, the compatibility of commercial IT testing techniques, we refer to the testing methods currently used in commercial IT software development. And these methods include unit testing, integration testing, system testing, acceptance testing, and module testing. And gaining a better understanding of uh, how these methods apply to the testing of research software will help research software developers have more confidence in the methods they use and reduce the need to discover this information on their own. So we began with a survey question about the frequency with which respondents use commercial IT methods in as a team. So as this figure shows, most teams apply at, uh, this method at least sometimes. And there are a few teams that apply commercial IT test rarely or never. Similar is the case when we ask the respondents about the use of commercial IT testing methods personally. So as this figure shows, most individuals apply these methods at least sometimes. And there are a few individuals that apply commercial IT tests rarely or never. So beyond whether the respondents use the commercial IT testing methods, we ask the level of value they see personally in using these methods. The distribution of these results in the figure, we can see that respondents generally saw a value in using such methods and with more than half answering high or very high. To gain an insight into where the commercial IT methods cause problems, we ask the respondents to explain any challenges they face in an open-ended manner. So our qualitative analysis of the results identified nine high-level categories of challenges shown in this figure. I discussed some of these challenges in detail in response to other questions, so I only highlight a subset here. Uh, overwhelmingly, the most common challenge respondents reported was that the methods were not useful. And this challenge arises because research software is typically not production software, and some commercial tools do not account for the issues with numerical tolerances. And it is difficult to adopt a commercial IT testing methods uh, to the development of um, scientific software because of numerical errors and often not knowing the expected output. And similar to the overall difficulties with testing research software, the second most common challenge is uh, to using commercial IT testing method is lack of resources. And one respondent explained that the challenge as lack of expertise, schedule demands, lack of R&D, and software development oriented tools, etc. The third most common response is the mindset of the research software developers. The problem is the developers often uh, feel like any time not is spent developing code uh, for the code review, uh, for the core software is not real work, and thus time spent uh, writing test is less enjoyable. In addition, the problem is cultural. That means convincing people that it is beneficial, necessary, and worth their time and not illustry, uh, insulting to their work. There are also challenges with mindset that originate external to the team and such as the funding agencies are generally not aware of their importance and effort is spent on testing is effort not is spent writing or publishing papers. Finally, uh, there is a lack of familiarity with the ensemble of testing patterns and goals available. Um, moreover, there is a lack of knowledge, need for infrastructure support, expensive or difficult to use, and runtime restrictions uh, that makes research software difficult to adopt commercial IT testing methods. 
So challenges not be made by the commercial IT testing methods. Mm, there are cases where the methods, these methods are just not applicable. So we ask the respondents uh, to explain any challenges that could not be made by commercial IT testing methods. Uh, the quantitative analysis produced five high level categories of challenges we can see in this figure. The most common challenge uh, by a large margin was that the methods do not meet the specific needs of research software. And these specific needs can include visualization, image processing and analysis, uh, fluid flow simulation or simulations where there is no uh, analytic solution or known correct answer. That means no Oracle. So a unique challenge of research software is that validation requires domain expertise, which is sometimes difficult to express in the commercial methods. And another situation that is common in research software is whether the results are meaningful. As a res uh, respondent um, stated, IT methods are good for uh, preventing errors, but not good at catching if numbers are no longer meaningful or uh, triaging to determine. So the respondents also mentioned a lack of expertise, slow to execute the test and continuous integration issues and benchmarks as some of the challenges and that could not be made by commercial IT methods. So what improvements to the testing process do research sector developers need? In terms of the improving the testing method process, respondent mentioned there is a need for training, such as education, examples, templates, so that they can use proper testing methods. And uh, they also mentioned they need more types of test and infrastructure support that will cover specific needs of the research software. And another important aspect is acknowledgement for their time and effort is spent on testing. And respondents also mentioned to create a culture of testing in the research software developers community that will help improve code quality and continuous integration. Moreover, making the testing process simpler and enough resources can potentially improve the testing process in research software. So to wrap up the first part of this uh, talk, overall uh, researchers pose a clear goal uh, on testing their project, uh, but the complexity associated with the process need further attention to make a culture of testing in the research software community and providing proper training and resources can potentially improve the testing process in research software. I'm jumping into the... So I'm going to pause you for a second, uh, mm -hmm. Nasser, because we have some questions from the okay. community about uh, this first part. Okay. Um, David, do you want to go ahead and read the questions? Yes. Um, so I just posted again the link to the Q&A document. Mm -hmm. And if you head over there, we'll see um, four questions. One, do you think the lower emphasis on quality with research software is due to people not knowing, um, software community not well trained enough, or something else? I think uh, both. <laughs> yeah, people are not trained enough, or not well trained enough, and also the motivations to do the testing. So while working on, on the testing, I work on the Los Alamos National Laboratory. So the people I worked on, they were sincere, but I talked with many people in, the, in that laboratory that they think testing is useful, but they don't have time to do that. And, and they don't have funding and they don't have um, the motivations actually to work on, on testing. And, but, but people think this is necessary. That's the good thing. And if we look at the papers that were published like if three or five years ago, and people mentioned that they don't see the necessity or they don't feel the necessity. So nowadays things are getting better and people are more into adopting software engineering concepts, especially uh, testing, code review, and any other software quality practices in research software. So yeah, things are getting better. And also the BSSW initiative and there are research software engineering groups that are helping with uh, improvement of software engineering practices in research software. Um, okay. 
Next question, how do we ensure software quality without intervening with research and frequent changes to the software, especially if researchers are developing the software? How do we ensure software quality without intervening with research? Mm. What? Maybe, I think maybe the question is trying to ask, you know, because research software is, uh, there's a lot of frequent changes, of course, and that mm -hmm. uh, how do you not impede the research but still yeah. ensure software quality. So, so they're that, competing interests. Yeah, that's why a system testing would be better because research software changes frequently. And so if you want to uh, test uh, everything, but in, after every iteration of the changes, it may be difficult to write another test. So there are two things. One could be the test driven development. So you develop the test first and then uh, develop the, the software so that you already know what are the things you are going to develop or you do, do the test at the end. So you, you have your module in a stable state first and then you jump into the testing process. So both works, but it depends actually on the uh, actual software or actual research associated with, because underlying science is the difficult part on software testing in research software that usually doesn't have in the quality, uh, commercial or IT software. Yeah. Okay, um, should we move on to the next question? Yeah. Do you differentiate in any way between automated and manual testing? Yeah, there is, there is, this is dif different. So you can do both or you can do one. So it depends on which your project actually and, and the, uh, the timeline you have or um, the project goals you have. So for some projects, uh, I know that so automatic testing is not possible because there are some adjustment after every iteration. And I have seen some research software that iterate over a month and then finally produce a software test. So, and if that output changes in the next iteration, so it is difficult to uh, employ automated testing. But there are ways, there are statistical ways and there are different ways they can uh, still adopt some uh, automatic testing in their um, in their continuous integration system but yeah so there are differences and i think it depends on the projects and many of the software engineering questions are it depends because every project is different and every project has different characteristics yeah the next question i, I can question... see Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I, well, I think that question about the automated testing and manual testing also refers to your survey results as well. Was there any sort of differentiation between automated testing versus manual testing in your Oh, so we didn't differentiate question? that in the, in the survey. Yeah, so people okay. did not explicitly mention that what kind of testing they are doing. But we are doing a follow-up survey and uh, some for in-depth uh, results of the, because this survey is the preliminary survey. So this is step one. And now we are moving further to step two. And then finally, we will try to develop some testing techniques that will directly uh, help the research software community. So we are uh, in trying to go in depth on the next step. And I think I hope to find something. For, for my clarification, I'm kind of reading this question. Mm -hmm. I want to be sure that we, I don't think that if you're, if you're running the code and looking at a number and writing a number in a spreadsheet or reporting a result by email, that that counts as, as testing. So all testing should be somewhat automated yeah. in the sense that there is a, a command whose purpose is to give you a true false. Yeah. Yeah. That's the purpose of automated testing, but in many cases you don't have the answer. So, you may have to use your expertise, like you you know the science or you know the algorithm that it might look like this, or you might produce a graph that you might have to, uh, you may have to like as, do some assumption that yeah, this might look correct. So this is not the usual case, but th this may some cases where people do manual testing, but yeah, but it is recommended to do automatic testing so that you use some statistics, even if you don't have exact output or anything, so that you can get uh, some yes or no from your continuous integration system. Okay, and I'm mm -hmm. gonna read just um, this next one here. And I don't know how much time we have for questions before we move on to the second part. Mm -hmm. um, we can uh, come back to the questions after the 
talk, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the next one might actually get a little bit more mm -hmm. in detail. Um, decide if you want to answer this one. What do you want? What do you classify as commercial testing methods? Does that include CICD or fuzzing? Um, okay. And did you provide a definition to the participants? Maybe if you just answered the second part of that question, then we can move on with the talk. Yeah, and no, I'm going to the question. So there is two things. One is testing method and one is testing technique. So testing methods are the methods like uh, unit test or system test, integration test. And testing techniques could be uh, the more in general um, items like fuzzing testing or uh, boundary values testing or any kind of testing like metamorphic testing or runtime assertions. Uh, so these kind of things. So we provided every definitions in the uh, survey. So we clearly mentioned which is methods and so, so that everyone can be in the same page, we, uh, we provided definitions of the testing methods. And in some questions, we have like 15 or more testing techniques. Uh, so we define all of them. And even if, uh, if when we say it, commercial IT testing techniques, we also define that so that uh, people are in the same page. Because I know uh, we have different kind of definitions in our mind. And there is a paper you can look in mm, online that how many definitions are there on unit testing. So people have their own kind of <laughs> definitions in their mind. So bringing them into one unified platform, we provided definitions and we piloted the survey with uh, prior uh, spreading it out so that we, this is understandable. Yeah. All right, maybe, thanks. Mm -hmm, maybe we can go to the presentation now or? Sure, yeah, we'll, we'll if table. If you have any questions you want to answer, go ahead. Otherwise, I think we should probably continue. Uh, any thoughts? I agree. Continue. Why don't you go ahead and continue with the uh, peer code review? Yeah, then we can come back to the questions. So you can still see my uh, screen, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure because there was the browser and the screen, all that. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So in the first part, we discussed that research software has complex computational behavior. So this complexity, along with the fact that the expected output are often unknown, uh, makes it difficult to test research software. So in many cases, the input space of research software is so vast that it is not feasible or even possible to develop a test suite. To remedy this situation, uh, code review is a systematic examination of computer source code by other peer developers of the project to find and uh, remove vulnerabilities. And code review is recognized as a beneficial tool for improving software quality. So for this study, we gather data from two sources, interviews and surveys. So we first enumerated an overall research questions. And based on the research questions, we then identified a series of specific survey and interview questions. And as part of internship at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications, NCSA, I had the first hand access to research software developers to conduct the interviews. And after that, to reach a broader audience, we con uh, conducted a sun survey. So we included 22 interviews and 62 survey responses to this study. And the participants were from more than 50 projects and all of them had at least some experience with code review. So similar to the first part, I'm going to describe demographics of the interviewees and survey respondents. And then I will discuss how do research software developers perform code review and what effects does code review have on research software and what difficulties do research software developers face with code review and what improvements uh, to the code review process do research software developers need. Mm, yeah, at first the demographics. So number of years work on research software. So this distribution of respondents uh, indicates um, most participants had at least five years of experience working in research software. And just under one third had more than 10 years of experiences. And only a small number had less than one year. So this distribution suggests that participants had appropriate experience and knowledge to provide valid answers to the questions. And yeah, so this figure shows the study part in the role of the study participants. 
and then they assume different roles within their uh, respective projects. It is similar to the first part of this talk that many participants play multi multiple roles, and this is usual in research software. And then we asked in a survey question that what is the balance between code they review and code they ask others to review? And the answers to this question show the respondents over him, overwhelmingly um, participate both as a code reviewer and reviewee. And only a small number of respondents act exclusively as either a reviewer or a reviewee. So an analysis of the raw data in, indicated that participants with more experience tend to review more, while those with less experience tend to uh, write more with code. And therefore, these this study participants have appropriate expertise, both with the reviewing code and with uh, receiving feedback from reviews to provide valuable insight into the code review process. So how do research software developers perform code review? The responses to a survey question show that um, in the projects respondent uh, in the projects in the project represented by the respondents, more than 75% of the code undergo peer review. A further analysis of the raw data suggests that in a larger open source soft research software projects, only core developers perform code review, while in the smaller projects, almost all of the developers perform code review. And this observation makes sense as participants in smaller projects have to take on more tasks. So this figure shows that most respondents spend one to five hours uh, per week on code review, and an additional one third of the respondents spend less than one hour per week. Still fewer respondents spend more than five hours per week. So time for a first response. This figure shows how long it takes a code author to get the first feedback on his or her code submission. So interestingly, 43% of the respondents said it takes uh, less than a day for a first response. And the result is surprising, given that uh, con conducting code review is not the primary job of research software developers, nor do they receive incentives for performing code review. And approximately 40% of the respondents indicated the response time was one to three days. Uh, this result seems reasonable given that research software developers have other tasks related to their own work and may not prioritize reviewing others' code as uh, quite as highly. Um, the results in this figure provides an insight into the overall amount of time taken to reach a final decision on a code submission. Approximately 45% of respondents indicated the projects uh, reached a final decision in less than a week. And for very small changes or bug fixes, that can uh, that time was even shorter, like less than a day. So overall, 93% uh, of the respondents indicated projects uh, reach a decision in less than a month. It actually depends on the size of the contributions, like small things could be accepted in a day or two, or a large thing could take weeks or even months. So code review help research software developers identify many problems in the code. So this figure shows three high level categories of problems reviewers identified. The most of the participant indicated problems related to the software quality and code mistakes. So we identified five categories of positive experiences uh, research software developers have regarding code review. Uh, the most common positive response is knowledge sharing. So they can uh, they find it to be a very cooperative process in which suggestions are welcome and coders are looking for guidance. Also in a big project, it is rare that anyone understand the whole picture and people rely on each other's experience with their part of the project. Respondents also mentioned uh, improved code quality, uh, good feedback, positive feeling, and identified problems. So negative experience. Our analysis of the survey responses resulted in seven categories of negative experiences. The top two negative experiences are that code review process takes too long and that the code authors misunderstand criticism. 
Um, the respondents mentioned it can be very long and time consuming for, uh, for a very small changes as the process must be followed for even a single character change. Now, when the author of the code misunderstand criticism, the reviewers are less willing to provide it or concerned with how it might affect the team dynamics. So what effect does code review have on research software? So in response uh, to your survey question, 74 out of the 84 participants strongly agreed that code review is important for their project. Perhaps uh, this result is not surprising given that these people choose to participate in this in a survey about code review practices. And then we asked, why do they think so? So the, this figure shows four primary reasons uh, for the positive responses. In terms of uh, improving the code quality, participants say reviews are a way to improve the code and learn. Uh, without them, bugs would proliferate and um, code quality would decrease. It's a means of improving the code quality of the software or improve uh, or of improving the individuals who write it. Yeah. In terms of knowledge sharing, uh, code review helps ensuring that at least two people have always looked at each piece of code. So it, spreading out expertise. And additionally, uh, it is a forum for learning for each other. Uh, so people learn from each other, people learn from their uh, peer developers and junior uh, developers uh, find it as a forum so that they can learn more about the projects, not only the code reviews. One of the few participants who did not think code review was important suggested that um, requiring code review as a compliance activity is a waste of time. And since that is their project's policy, uh, he or she view code review as a box to be checked. Um, the how code review improves code. The most popular reason regarding improving the code was that code review helped with correctness. As one respondent said, if you have written the code yourself, it is hard to see the assumptions you have made and others can spot this and ask you to clarify and spot your mistakes. Code review also improves code because it helps improve readability by making the code base more uniform. And in addition, um, having more eyes look at the code is beneficial because having a second pair of eyes often catches issues the code author missed or did not consider. This figure shows that most participants agreed uh, that code review helps decrease code complexity. For example, code review decreases complexity by solving problems using cleaner strategies, but may increase complexity in the uh, near term by forcing it to handle corner cases that would not otherwise be discovered until later. Uh, so what are the difficulties developers face during code review? So we categorize the challenges of code review process into four high level categories. Overwhelmingly, the uh, biggest challenge is understanding code. For some respondents, understanding code is significantly harder than writing code. And understanding someone else's code requires time because the reviewer has to work out exactly what added code is doing uh, so that he can evaluate it. The other challenge are, challenges are understanding the system, there are administrative issues, and identify the problems on the code. Then we found uh, six types of barriers, and the overwhelmingly the most common barrier is time, uh, because code review takes time away from the work anyone supposed to be doing. The second most common barrier relates to the phrasing of comments. For example, often the reviewers don't dare to criticize code and need lots of encouragement to do so. And reviewers are also concerned about how their uh, comments are perceived because there is no tone in written comments. And another barrier is finding right people. That is people with both domain knowledge and the coding knowledge. So potential areas of improvement in the code review process. So our analysis found seven high level ways to improve the code review process. The most common answer is formalizing the process, likely due to the informal process followed by 
most research software developers. And automatic tooling could relieve some of the burden of the reviewers by making it easier to switch between fork and branches in operation. Even though commercial and open source projects frequently use tools to support the code review process, many participants indicated the lack of tool support for code review in research software. And finally, there is a need for more people, incentives, and more training to improve the code review process in research software. Having said this, beside payments, uh, some other kind of uh, reward might help with that. So to wrap up the second part, uh, in general, research software developers employ an in informal code review process and code review has an overall positive impact and participants found code review to be very important in their project. The most common difficulty reported by the participants is finding time to do it and understand other people's code. And so, so formalizing the review process by including more people, more training and providing compensation uh, could potentially improve the code review process. So I'm going to provide some recommendations on both testing and code review. So yeah, I'm, I may go ahead and do the recommendations first and then take on questions. So for testing, so provide enough training on software testing to all kinds of research software developers, ranging from graduate students to experienced researchers. Uh, incorporate more tests that can solve specific needs of the research software and provide infrastructure support, for example, a public service for training, including many tire pricing structure, formation time, and a sophisticated testing dashboard. Um, provide automation for setting tests and analyze the result and improve a continuous integration system to facilitate a better way of testing, especially uh, the incoming test during downtime, and make a culture of testing in the team to and encourage other uh, by sharing the benefits from the experience of testing, and improve the code quality of the co um, in code quality so that developers can write tests easily. Uh, so provide proper acknowledgement. Uh, of developers for contributing on testing and make the testing process simpler so that it is easy to adopt in the project and provide enough resources to developers so that they can utilize the resources to develop test suite. So here are some recommendations on peer code review. So make the code review process more formal with a structured guideline uh, for each step of the process. Uh, try to ensure at least one science review and one technical review. Uh, maybe include automatic tools in the code review process and uh, train your peer reviewers the best practices to use the tool. Encourage more people to participate in the review process and allocate some time to do the review. Uh, provide incentives or rewards uh, to reviewers to participate in code review. Uh, allocate sufficient time in the development process uh, to perform code review and provide faster feedback to any incoming review request. And train reviewers on how to phrase good feedback and train developers to forget their egos and accept comments from the reviewers to improve their code, uh, make the overall code review process faster and provide necessary support uh, from the administrative level that encourages people to participate in the code review process. So yeah, I would especially like to thank my PhD advisor, Dr. Jeffrey Carver from University of Alabama, and all those good people from different national laboratories who helped me with the, these studies. And I acknowledge the support from the NSF grant and also I'm gratefully thankful uh, to all of the survey respondents and interviewees for their the valuable insight. So yeah, this is my email address. Now I can take on questions and go back to the Google Doc. Also, I would like to say at this point that if you are interested uh, on software testing or anything on this on your projects, feel free to send me an email. I'm looking for collaborators and also I have some follow-up studies. I'm looking for teams and all that. So if you think 
this might be useful please feel free to contact me yeah thank you all thanks um, mm -hmm. thanks Nasser. so yes there's quite a few questions that are growing um in the doc if your question doesn't get addressed within the hour um uh you know uh, right now that we can um that all the questions will get addressed and so um you know come back to the doc at, at a later time as well um i just want to say you know thanks at, I, I, I can tell you are a new father, a new uh, uh, you know, faculty, <laughs> and a new Californian. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate uh, the, the presentation amidst all the craziness that is going on in your life. So yeah, thank, you. thank you very much. All right. <laughs> so uh, let's go back to the questions then. David, can you help with uh, moderating some of the questions? Maybe some of the ones we can um, address at this time. Sure. I'm looking at the question document. There's a lot of people who are really interested in finding links to resources. And I think the best way to address those might be by, by typing into this document or providing mm -hmm. further links. So I'm going to focus here on questions that are about the research surveys and, and recommendations specifically. Yeah, I can see a question for 50 definitions of the survey. So I still have the a uh, link of the survey of, um, let me, let me write it down here. So that was circulated testing, testing survey. Yeah, I got it. So the surface is still live for the definitions of research question will take this. Oh, here. Yes. So I posted a link. Uh, so you can find the survey uh, over there. The definitions are still over there, I think. Mm -hmm. It's live. Um, oh, I see. Is the, the survey link? Yeah, this is the survey link uh, that we sent last year. Is that one that we just posted to the chat? Uh, let me also, survey it. monkey 5GY. Let me check on that. So I can stop sharing a screen, right? Or do I need to keep my screen shared? So I I, I kicked you off, and okay. um, I have uh, listed the this is the oh, closing okay. slide mm -hmm. for yeah. now. The I can best, I can see practice. the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. This way, uh, yeah. Because uh, so for anyone who needs to drop off, I just want to remind um, folks that the next series is October 14th on scalable precision tuning of numerical oh, software. The survey link I posted uh, on the question and answering document is the testing survey where uh, someone asked the definitions. So if uh, he goes to that link, he can find all the definitions. Okay, I see it now. It's, it's mm -hmm. bsw.io events. IO events, yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, for future reference, if we go to this bsw.io events page, will we find surveys that you put out? Or how, how can we get connected to your surveys? Yeah, so in, on the events page, you can find all the surveys, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. um, now, there was one question on what did commercial IT methods refer to? Yeah, Is the that... commercial IT methods refer to the unit testing, uh, integration testing, system testing, and acceptance testing, and all these. Yeah. Okay. These question. are the methods. Uh, yeah. And so these methods were actually generated from the testing practices in the commercial IT software. So uh, nowadays, people call it like commercial IT software methods. Okay. Um, was there any study of survey responded bias. It seems likely that people who do testing would be more likely to respond and the results for research software in the wild might be worse than presented here. People might have been biased to be more favorable towards testing because they answered a question on testing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So that's the limitation of the survey. So if someone agrees to take the survey, so that means he has some sort of experience or some sort of interest on in testing. So this might be a little bit biased, but yeah, that's true. But that's the best we can approach for. Okay, but was there a question specifically that you might look at as um, familiar familiarity with testing practices? So which uh, so where is in the doc you are asking the question? Is in the second page or first page? Um, 
I am highlighting it here in the second page. Okay, so was there any study of survey respondents bias? So the page, so these are all published or in the process of publishing actually. So um, these are, both of these studies are journal paper and that will be coming out late this year because I am uh, working on the review and, and the revision of this. So you will uh, get it published and maybe we can send out an uh, mailing list email that the paper is out. So there are more results and there are more explanation. So because of the talk, I had to make a choice to pick some and don't pick some. Yeah, and so in the limitation, you can see in the study, <laughs> survey respondents bias. And also it seems like the people do not, they should be more likely to respond. So, yeah, and I, I agreed on that. People who do testing would be more likely to respond. Yeah, that might have happened, but we did not track on uh, respondents and we don't collect personal data. So we can't say that, but yeah, that's the trade. That's the trade to the study that might might be biased. And, and this is how empirical studies actually work because anyone, anyone wants to do some, uh, anyone wants to take this uh, survey or anyone's agreed to participate in the interview or any sort of data collection. So he or she might have some interest. Otherwise he won't spend time on that. Um, how does team size affect code review practices or have you looked at the correlation? Between yeah, them? so the team size really affect. So when there is a lot, uh, there is a big team, there are more people. So people can put aside some of their task and, and do the reviews. But I, I have seen some teams that are fairly small and they have, they have more roles to take on and they do more uh, work. So they don't really get uh, much time and, and much resources. And in smaller teams usually get um, less resources. So yeah, larger teams tend to do more reviews. So I, I worked on a team that has more than 100 developers all around the world, and they really do code review more formally. And, and code review is a must for them to have the patch um, merged to the repository. But for a small teams, and sometimes the people and the folks just work uh, directly uh, sitting on a room and they just, uh, informally uh, show each other's code and do the reviews. So I think larger teams have much more formal you know, code review process. Okay, um, it's two o'clock and we're actually out of time, but thank you for, for answering the questions we were able to get to. The rest of them, I think we'll be typing in um, answers and providing links to resources. Also in a few weeks time, this, uh, this recorded session will be posted. Okay, so I want to add that I will go over all these questions again and I will type in uh, to see if I have more thoughts and, and I will also type in the rest of the uh, questions. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Anessa, and uh, thank you everyone for attending and have a great uh, rest of the week. Yeah, thank you. You too. <laughs>